Hello, I've gotten a few requests for doing cloth simulations inside of the sequencer with a little wind mixed in. So I've got my fan and my curtains ready. Let's jump in and get started. I'm in Unreal 5 and I've got my two cloth items and they are in the sequencer. I'm gonna press the one key and there we go. We can see some wind blowing and also the direction shifting. All right, so let's go over how to do that. The first thing I'm gonna do is go over how to turn these into cloth pieces. So we need them to be skeletal meshes first, then we'll bring them back in. I'll show how to bring them into the sequencer and apply wind there. So what I did is this is the um, Unreal Futures sample level and I went and grabbed this curtain, I hit Control B to select it in the content browser and then right click and I went to Asset Actions, Export. And I exported this as a FBX, which then I imported into Maya. So I'm just gonna jump into Maya. So here I am in Maya, I hit F3 to bring up the rigging menu in Maya. I created one skeletal bone because all you need is one joint essentially to turn this into a cloth sim. Now, if you do in the future want to create something that has multiple bones, um, I'll explain that in a second. But basically, I just shift clicked this and I went to bind skin with the default binding. Um, what I was talking about earlier is if you want to create multiple bones and have those set to specific target weights, I just want to mention this because some students that I work with don't always remember, that under Windows, General Editors, there is the Component Editor. Now in the Component Editor under Smooth Skins, then go in and select vertices and the Smooth Skins will show a spreadsheet based on what the weights are. Now, if you have multiple joints, then you could set specific vertices to 100% for that joint, which is just a faster way than painting. So I just wanted to point that out. So once you get this set up, just re-export this and you'll import this into Unreal as a skeletal mesh. Okay, we're back in Unreal and we are importing this and it's coming in now as a skeletal mesh. So I'm importing it. Now, I'm going to get rid of this material and I'm going to just copy over this one that I already made and I'll explain, I'll just copy it there. And basically I just took the material that was already on the curtains and what I did was I made it double sided. So just selected it, made it two sided. I scroll down to usage. You can see all these usage items that are unchecked. If you type in cloth, you'll see that usage is checked. But if you're rolling your own cloth shader, you're gonna possibly wanna turn this on. And what this does is it gives a little extra memory so that the material, when it's simulating, the material instance can be modified during the simulation. If you look at the other usage areas, there's like uh, morphs are in there, just adds a little bit of extra overhead to your material. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to apply that material to this skeletal mesh. So I'm opening this up, asset details, and now we're gonna wanna put the material in here. Let's see, we can just quickly grab this and just drop it in that way, or we can drop it down either way. And now that we've got that done, now the real key is this is going to contain a slot which will hold the clothing information. So to do that, it's pretty similar from Unreal 4, the workflow, we can right click on the asset and we can create a clothing data set from that and just click, click create. Now what we've done is in the clothing area, you can see this, it's got a clothing set. And what then you do from there is you want to paint your, your clothing weight. So I'm gonna do this really quickly. I'm activating the clothing paint. Paint value, I previously made that really high and that worked really well. And then also just to make this quick, we'll make the radius 
of the paintbrush fast and we'll just paint everything. Right now everything is going to simulate, but I don't want the top to simulate. So I will make the radius small again and also the strength of the brush to zero. So just the top, we'll just paint that off, turns black. Okay, and just to make this demo go quickly, now I've deselected that under the asset details under the clothing I need to drop in the the object now this looks a little bit pregnant or something right now and why is that that's just the collision that's um, overlapping it okay so you can see that there's a capsule here that's colliding with the cloth and I'm j I just offset it last time and scaled it up uh, the capsules are a pretty efficient collision mesh because it's just calculating the radius um, twice of spheres here but if you want you can switch it to something like a box and recalculate it maybe that's what we should do but I'm for this example I'll just keep it as capsule and offset it might have some clipping uh, we'll just leave it we'll jump back here and yeah that's looking good now we can already tell that it's simulating but the other thing that you might want to test is the cloth the cloth parameters itself in here so one thing that you can do is under character clothing you can test like the wind strength and yes that's working if you wanted to test different clothing parameters that's partly what this is for as well so um, i just want to point those out but i'm not going to demonstrate those so under cloth configs things like collision properties. If you get a lot of interpenetration, you might want to try uh, CCD or continuous collision detection. If you turn that on, it's a slight additional hit in simulation performance. There's other things like the stiffness and other properties that you can modify, but I'm not going to get into those. Like I said, the key that is that this is now a cloth asset and we can save this and all right one more thing to point out now if you do this whole process and if you're familiar with the cloth from unreal 4 you might notice that your unreal 5.0 the wind is not affecting in the simulation the wind doesn't affect your cloth and why is that well in the one that we just made here if you select it and you go down the cloth configs the chaos cloth config it doesn't look like it contains information for interfacing with the current version of the wind. So how can we fix that? Well, I brought in and I created a cloth in Unreal 4 and imported it into 5 and that carried this cloth config NV. And what is that? It has a, this cloth config has a cloth legacy interface method that will work with the wind. Okay, so how do we take this from this cloth and apply it to here. Well, we can add a clothing asset. So this is called my cloth two. And then we can, so we could just probably get rid of this one if we needed to. And so now if we select this, you can see it, it brought over the wind method. And then we can go in and drop the clothing for the cloth two in here. So now, because that's got the correct uh, clothing wind method interface, it will work for the rest of the simulation. Then bring it into our sequencer. So I'm going to hit the G key, and you can see that I've already added a wind actor. If you need to do that from scratch, you can just go under the place actors and grab a wind directional source actor. Uh, the other thing is if you want to create a new level sequence, uh, I've already done that and I've added those assets to the sequencer. So you just select the asset, right click, actor, add it to the sequence. Same thing with wind directional actor. Now, in addition to adding that, you want to typically go in and add the component. And that's where you're gonna add the additional elements that you can animate. So what do I mean by that? For example, with the skeletal mesh curtains, once you've added the skeletal mesh component, then you can go in and you can look for things like, oh, I want to modify the cloth blend weight, which was in there. So there's one. 
for the wind directional source actor, similarly, uh, you want to like add the component. So just do that first. So there's the wind directional source component. And once you've added the wind directional source component, then you can, from there, you can add the speed and the strength. And so you've got the, the speed, the strength, and the, there's the transform. So you can see that I've modified the movement of the, the direction and then also modify the speed and the strength. That's pretty much it. We've got it working. I rigged it up so that it works in the blueprints, the level blueprint. So just to make sure that I put everything together here. So I selected the, the sequencer. Let's go back here. And I right clicked and I added, created a reference to it and then just dragged off of that and say play sequence, play sequencer, and then I connected that to the one key. So that can play uh, the sequence. Uh, the other thing is I made it so that it, when, I, when I hit the escape key, it, it stops. Okay, so we're gonna play it one more time to wrap things up. So you can see it's slightly simulating, but when I hit the one key, there it goes. Yeah. I'm getting my own wind effects. Oh, there's a little little penetration there in the wall, but then we can hit the one key again and there's more wind. All right, awesome. So if you like the video, give it a like and make sure you just subscribe for more weekly Unreal content.